Hello, everybody, and welcome if you are watching online today. In our sermon series, Lost, we're exploring ways that we might feel far from God. Now, Lewis explored how we might feel alone in part one. Mark explored how we might feel excluded in part two. And in part three, we will explore what happens when we opt out. God asked Moses to be part of a rescue mission, to lead the Hebrew slaves from Egypt to freedom. Is this a challenge that Moses said yes to straight away? Did Moses say, great idea, God, count me in? Let's find out. Our first reading is from Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 to 15. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the land of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites, and now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you will say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Opting out. Confused. Moses probably felt confused. I mean, it's not every day that when you're out in the hillside, you see a bush on fire that wasn't actually burning up. I know when we read the Bible, we can't quite convey the emotion. I think it was probably something like this. Ah, there's a bush and it's not burning up confused. Moses was married. Moses was a father. Moses was a shepherd. He tried to put the past behind him. He dimly remembered Hebrew women smiling and cooing over him as a child. And then he'd become an Egyptian prince adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. 
He'd seen the hardship of the Hebrew slaves who were beaten by their Egyptian overseers. He lost his temper one day and killed the Egyptian who was beating the slave. His adopted father, Pharaoh, found out and tried to kill him. So Moses ran away from the palace and became a shepherd amongst Hebrew people. Moses was influenced by both Egyptian and Hebrew culture. But who was he? He probably felt confused about his identity. He opted out of his princely responsibility and power and became a shepherd. Sheep were less hassle than humans. But now he stood in front of a bush which did not burn up and encountered God. God, like Moses, had seen the suffering of the Hebrew slaves. God had a plan, a plan full of hope. The Hebrew slaves would be freed. They would live in a fertile land which would sustain them. They would be able to worship God freely on the mountain. I wonder if Moses thought initially, great plan, God, really like that, that's wonderful, until he heard the catch. God needed Moses to make it happen. Moses was confused about who he was and he needed to know who he was dealing with. So he tried to opt out of the plan in his confusion and he gave his excuses to God. Excuse number one. Who am I to go to Pharaoh? Well, we could say, actually, who better? Moses had lived in the palace. He understood all its etiquette. He was an ideal candidate. Moses also cared deeply about the suffering of the Hebrew people. He didn't deal with it constructively when he killed a man, but his passion for justice was still there. God saw it and wanted Moses to join in the rescue plan. Excuse number two. Who are you, God? Moses wanted to know on whose authority was the plan to be worked out. God responded by sharing a name. I am who I am. This meant God was dependable, faithful, and with people. A God who was in relationship with people and not some distant, remote God like the Egyptian gods. God was reliable because God was the God of Moses' ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Just think for a moment about confusion. Confusion can undermine our ability to think straight, and we might do things we regret. We might choose to opt out. We might, like Moses, want to run away. We might long for the easy, quiet life. We might let go of our responsibilities. We might make questionable choices. We might question our identity and our ability to perform tasks. We can, though, be encouraged by Moses' story because we see in it that God chooses the confused, the unsure of themselves, the people working through their identities. God identifies the spark within us, the things that make us passionate, and uses them for creative good. With God's help, our passions won't consume and burn us up, With God's help, 
our passions can glow brightly for hope and goodness. Confusion can undermine our faith that God cares. We might cry out, where are you, God? Why are people suffering? We may opt out and say, there's no hope. But remember, God saw the suffering of the Hebrew slaves and responded by calling Moses. God sees the suffering today and responds by calling people, you and me, to care. We see it in people opening up their homes to Ukrainian refugees. We see it in the work of the Red Cross and other aid agencies. We see it in thousands of organisations who have pledged to provide community support for refugees in the UK. We see it in your heartfelt response, High Street, to the appeal I made last week. And thank you. God invited Moses, with all his confusion, to opt in and trust the plan. God hasn't opted out from humanity, but opts in to be with us for all eternity. God can transform our individual lives for good. What is God calling us to opt into? What project, act of service, is simply niggling away at us, grabbing our attention? It may feel a big jump to opt in and commit ourselves, but God promises to be with us, just as he promised Moses. God was really passionate about the Hebrew rescue plan. The question of Moses' validity for the task and God's identity had been answered. But Moses comes up with a third excuse. Exodus chapter 4, verse 1. Moses answered, what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not send you? Doubts. Moses let his doubts stop him from acting. Excuse number three. What will other people think? What if they don't believe me? Moses is an overthinker. He catastrophizes the imagined responses. He listens to the what ifs. He listens to the voice of self criticism. You can't possibly do this. He makes the plan a failure before he's even tried anything. He's more concerned about the reaction, criticism, and mockery of other people. God reassures Moses by an amazing show of power, which is in the rest of chapter 4. He shows Moses that his shepherd's staff will become a snake and then can become a staff again. He shows Moses that his hand becomes leprous and then becomes healthy again. He shows Moses that if he collects water from the Nile, it will turn to blood and then back to water again. Pretty spectacular. But Moses' doubts still got the better of him and he wasn't fully on board with the plan yet. Doubts can also lead to our inaction. We overthink the imagined consequences and we opt out. Inaction and opting out can be destructive. 
We may get stuck in a rut and not fulfil our potential. We talk ourselves out of applying for a job, starting a relationship with someone, saying sorry to someone, offering to volunteer at church or in the community. Everyone, absolutely everyone, in God's eyes, has something to offer. Everyone, absolutely everyone, has something to offer. God invites us to have courage, have a go, opt into the adventure. After all, what's the worst that could happen? Well, in Moses' case, the Hebrew slaves were freed and Pharaoh did let them go. It's a bit of a story. It's a great one. I encourage you to read it. And us? Well, perhaps we just need that little bit of courage to say, yes, I'm in. We might not fully know how things will work out or how long they might take, but God promises to be with us. I will be with you. Moses made three excuses so far to opt out. Who am I? Who are you, God? Others won't believe me. And now for the last two from Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 to 15. Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past, nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind is it not i the lord now go and i will help you speak and will teach you what to say but moses said pardon your servant lord please send someone else then the lord's anger burned against moses and he said what about your brother aaron the levite I know he can speak well. He's already on his way to meet you and will be glad to see you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help both of you speak and will teach you what to do. Confusion, doubts, and now out and out refusal. Excuse number four. I can't do it because I haven't got the right skills. Moses told God that he was not a good public speaker and he wouldn't be able to give quick responses to people's questions. And even though God offers to help him, to help him speak and teach him what to say, Moses then comes up with his ultimate opt-out excuse. Excuse number five, send someone else. We can convince ourselves when we are confused, we doubt ourselves, perceive that something will be too hard and we're not the person for the task, we can tell ourselves that we will mess up. We can think other people might be better at it than us. But God sees our potential. God invites us to use our skills and talents to be hope bringers, life enablers, peacemakers, 
we may be surprised that God did not take Moses' no for an answer. I'm glad God is more persistent than we are. God found a way, despite being angry with Moses' excuses, God invited Aaron, Moses' brother, to help him in the task of public speaking. Moses, at this point, stopped opting out and opted in to God's plan. In Exodus, we can read the epic story of how Moses did lead the Hebrew slaves out of Egypt. Despite all those excuses, he did it with God's help. It was challenging. It was often fraught with danger, but Moses was the person for the job. Moses developed. Moses grew more confident as his relationship with God strengthened and his faith deepened. We may have refused to do something which we felt God was urging us to do in the past. We may have opted out and said, not me. We may have started something, but opted out when the challenges were great. But take comfort. God, however, always opts in to love humanity, to love us and save us so that we can flourish and realize our full potential. God offers us fresh starts and new horizons. Why don't we give God a chance? Opt into God's love. Embrace the adventure. Discover who we are meant to be and use our potential for the good of others and to God's glory. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious, loving God, thank you that you see the potential in each of us. And when we have doubts, when we're confused, when we want to run away and refuse you, give us courage to trust you, to let you guide our lives with your love and your peace and your wisdom so that we can be part of building your kingdom. Amen.